Hey guys, I'm Jordan Winter and you're watching No Free Lunches. Today we're here in Lawrence, Kansas checking out the best bakeries. Let's get this bread. Oh my. I'm here at Alchemy Coffee Shop and Bakehouse on the 800 block of Massachusetts Street in downtown Lawrence, Kansas. Join me as I sit down for some treats with Joni, where she tells me about her journey as a baker and how that's led to Alchemy's move downtown. Ben and I started Alchemy with nothing. Like we don't come from family money. We don't. We didn't have investors. Like it was scraping together. What we had a little bit of like. I know Ben's grandpa helped him initially buy some equipment. But I mean, it is. It's been like so grassroots. Uh -huh. <laughs> so when he was wanting to open a coffee shop, it was like off of Mass, this tiny little spot, and it was affordable, and there was nothing. There was a vacuum, right? Nothing over there. And then we met in September, and then I was baking for him right away because he was looking for a local baker to because he was just doing coffee. I mean, him and I are very much like if we see something that needs to happen, like we're gonna go get it and yeah. do it. And then once that's ready, we're going we're up to the next thing. So out of nowhere, we were like, let's build this kitchen. So we built the kitchen over on 19th Street, um, and we're, that was opened by June. And then pretty much within six months, it was pretty obvious that we needed to get a bigger space, just mm -hmm. like if we wanted to grow. And honestly, like survive. It took us almost a year and a year and a half, two years to build this place. Wow. Like we knew it was going to be a big project, but it was so much more than we had even anticipated. Yeah. Well, it's got such a curated vibe in here. Uh, how would you say you went about uh, doing the design? What image did you have in mind at first? So the overall vibe, like when I was really thinking about the shop, and Ben too, we want something that looks like it's been here for a hundred years and it's going to be here for a hundred after. But this business model is more of like, gosh, how do we elevate, but yet still make it comfortable? Because mm -hmm. our whole idea really is like, trying to bring what was considered to be elitist or bourgeois stuff mm -hmm. to that it's approachable to the average person because the average everybody loves good food yeah you know what i mean <laughs> and part of getting people to try something is making it comfortable and interesting that they want to walk in and they feel comfortable waiting in line if they have to wait in line for five minutes you know? yeah you want them to be welcome it's interesting in the midwest people are very comfortable with what they're comfortable with uh -huh. you know what i mean <laughs> oh like yeah they really want those predictable items. Yeah. And so I come out and I'm a little bit, you know, this is not your predictable, you know, biscuit egg sandwich or your avocado toast kind of thing. And so I try to throw bones out there for some people so that they feel comfortable. If you get them in and they can try something that they're familiar with, like, oh, they have French toast, then they're more likely to branch out. Yeah. But if you don't offer anything that's comfortable at first. Yeah. It's like a new version of a classic, but it gives them something new to crave. Right. Know? Right. <laughs> So, yeah, to get sick of and try something different. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm always stuck between wanting to be experimental and branching out versus right. getting what's on the menu that I know is already good. Right. Oh my god, I'm so guilty of that. I'll just get the same thing for like three months. Same. I'm like, and I didn't really know what I wanted to do because I didn't want to do what everybody else in town's already doing. You know, it's like I hate it when people step on my toes and try to recreate something I'm doing. I'm mm -hmm. so like competitive that way. Mm -hmm. But I give that honor to people around me too. It's like if they're doing like amazing tacos, I don't even do tacos, like let them have yeah. the tacos in, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I was trying to kind of figure out like what is it that I want to serve, you know, and like what is it that I like to eat and that mm -hmm. I want to give to people that would be a different feel than what other places in town are doing. Mm -hmm. The avocado toast, there's so many things where I'm like, I'm never doing avocado toast. It's so trite, oh my god, <laughs> everybody is doing it. I've been, was living in LA, New York, and that was like a thing 20 years ago. Why are we just now doing it here in the Midwest, you know? Like, yeah. so annoyed with it. But honestly, like, it's really good. And that was Ben's thing. He's like, he's my best friend, and so he knows me well. And so I'm just like, I don't want to do it, everybody's doing it. And he's like, uh -huh. everybody's doing it because it's good. Mm -hmm. So now you do it in your way. It makes it good, you know? And I'm just yeah. like, no, never, it's not happening, blah, blah, blah. But then it sits in my brain, see? And then I start working, working, working. Uh -huh. And then, then I have like the salmon avocado toast, you know? Okay. Um, or like the almost French toast is fantastic because 
it kind of goes along with that like um, French Southern vibe, where it's, I mean, all those Southerners love their butter and like all that yummy stuff. I love this because you don't have to douse it in a bunch of syrup. You don't have to douse it in a bunch of butter for it to taste good because it's already made with the sweet bread that we make in house. Uh -huh. So you can get any of the sweet breads made like this, but um, this is with pumpkin bread. Mm -hmm. Oh, and yeah. We fry it up a little bit. It does that whipped like butter. But it's so clean. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of my answer to dirty French toast, mm -hmm. which is my almost French toast. <laughs> <laughs> and it is delicious. <laughs> it's so good. I love it with the berries, obviously. Oh yeah. I, I throw berries kind of on everything. I throw like red pepper flakes and berries and flakes and like kosher salt. Mm -hmm. Everything, I love it. Sprinkle it on top. Mm -hmm. Always. So what are some of your personal favorite baked goods? Well, everything in here is, so I wouldn't make it. <laughs> it's kind of one of those. Biscuit Danish. Um, it's got cream cheese in the center. So we make all of our jams from scratch. So mm -hmm. this is a raspberry one. Um, uh -huh. So I was researching it. And there wasn't much out there, but it was a lot of like a couple of recipes that were like, my grandma used to do this. And I mm. love that stuff. Mm -hmm. That's definitely like how I like to bake, is stuff that we're all familiar with, you know? Making it gourmet, making it taste like what you wanted it to taste like, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And so, um, and I mean, we obviously make our Southern Biscuits from scratch here every day. So when we were whipping them up the other, like months ago, I was like, okay, I want to do this thing. Let's do this. we got to create a crater. I want to put cream cheese in it. Let's throw jam on it. <laughs> and it took a little bit of fussing with it, but then now it's this and it's so good. Yeah. It's like not what I expected because I think biscuit and I think dry and but because mm -hmm. there was always that you crack it out of a can and the dough explodes and you're like, ooh, that's fun. <laughs> and then after that, you're like, I don't really like how it tastes, you know? Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I guess I should start digging in since we got all these plates coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all, all of the stuff that I have really perfected has come across really organically. A lot of it prodded by my husband, honestly, mm -hmm. um, going, you got to do this, you got to do this. I'm like, I don't have to do it. I'm not doing it. I'm never making cookies. I'm not wasting my time with cookies. And oh my God, like I have like 10 or 12 of like the best gourmet tweaked cookies. And the biscuit is the same way. When we opened up the small shop over there, Ben was like, Oh, you should do some sort of breakfast sandwich. And I was like, no, uh, that means I gotta be there at like six in the morning. I don't wanna do that. Do you wanna do that? No, you don't wanna do that, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, but the challenge, it like sticks in my head and start thinking about it. And mm -hmm. so then I kind of got into making biscuits and it's it was it's definitely an art form. Oh, I'm so sure. And now it's, it's like iconic. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Same with pie. I didn't think I really liked pie, but then when I started making my own crust, mm -hmm. it was flaky and buttery and all this stuff. Oh my gosh, this is really good. <laughs> yeah. And then making the filling how I like, with just like clean, you know? Yeah, it's like a challenge to yourself, you know? Yeah. Especially because you're such an experienced baker. It's like you trust yeah. your skills to like overcome your taste buds. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Totally. <laughs> well, and I know what I, it's like, I know, it's like learning the language. There's all these puzzle pieces floating around and then one day it all clicks and you're pretty much fluent. And you don't really know how that happens, but it just all kind of goes. Right, my style of cooking is like Southern French. So mm -hmm. I love peasant food. I think peasant food is like some of the best food that's out there. It is so typically clean. They don't have a lot of stuff. They're taking like what five ingredients I had around and making it, but they're making it so flavorful. Mm -hmm. And French food is very much that way. It can be very simple, like the less ingredients, the better. Mm -hmm. um, but the Southern part of me is like <laughs> flavor. I want full flavor. I really want to commit. If we're going to do sea salt, but I want big flake sea salt and I want you to see it and I want you to taste it. I don't want it just to be there visually, but then you eat it and you have no flavor. You yeah. know? I feel like a lot of food is that way where it looks really pretty, but you go to bite it and you're like, mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't want to sacrifice one for the other, right. the look versus the taste. Right. Well, thank you so much for sitting down with us today, Joni. Yeah, thanks for your time. Yeah. I'm so glad you guys came and got to see everything. And Same. Well, we look uh, forward to seeing what the next thing on the menu is going to be. Thanks, so do I. <laughs> To check out more bakeries, head over to nofreelunches.co, where we cover 1900 Barker, Muncher's Bakery, and Wheatfields. Stay up to date by following us on Instagram and subscribing to our YouTube channels. Links are in the description. Thanks for watching.